Hey everyone, and welcome to or welcome back to a peace interview. Today, the Peace Project presents a conversation with the down to earth and socially conscious artist Catherine Ng. Catherine is a queer Chinese American artist who focuses on art centered around her identities. This includes, but is not limited to, Chinese ink paintings of feelings simultaneously included and excluded from both Chinese and American worlds, what it was like to grow up Chinese American, and being a queer Asian woman. Join interviewer Caitlin Chung as she speaks with Catherine about the importance of self expression. The influence of Catherine's queerness on her art and voice, and more. In three, two, one. Hi, my name is Caitlin Chung. I am a general staff interviewer here at the Peace Project, and I get the honor and pleasure to interview Catherine Eng today. Catherine is a queer Chinese American artist who focuses on art centered around her identities. This includes, but is not limited to, Chinese ink paintings of feeling simultaneously included and excluded from both Chinese and American worlds, what it was like to grow up Chinese American and being a queer Asian woman. So let's just start this off real easy. Catherine, please tell me about yourself. Well, I felt like you introduced me pretty well. That was good.、Um, my name is Catherine.、Uh, I do a lot of things I've always been doing.、Um, I really use it as a way of healing myself and expressing myself.、Um, I don't know what to talk about. I don't know. I feel like you covered a lot in the bio.、Um, I'm from Southern California and. Right now, I'm trying to apply to some business and education degrees to, to work on this nonprofit that I work with. That's awesome.、Um, can you tell me a little bit about that nonprofit? Yeah, so it's called Cove Education.、Um, it was by a bunch of students at Harvard and MIT. And I was originally、um, a tutor for them. And then You know, there were some applications for some higher positions, and then they asked me to be on the national team. So now I'm the pedagogical director. So, what I do with that is I train tutors like how to teach.、Um, I, I teach tutors how to teach, I direct tutoring programs in schools in Chicago and various cities in New Jersey.、Um, and then I also run this extracurricular club for children. Um, so that way they can explore their interests in art, book, and chess. So through that,、um, so through that extracurricular club that I do with Cove Education, we call it like ABC Club because it's art, book, and chess.、Um, I actually do give free art lessons. So I teach、um, this really fun like cartoon drawing class. So like kids will come in and like with an idea of like, oh, today they want to draw like SpongeBob or like they want to draw like Pokemon or like something like that. And I'll kind of like guide through the drawings. It's really fun.、Um, and then I also help design all the other art class. So we have like an anime class, we have like an abstract painting class, we have like drawing techniques class.、Um, and really, the idea behind this, this whole ABC club was that I really wanted to give kids an opportunity to explore hobbies. Um, especially those hobbies that are historically underfunded by schools, right? Like art, book, and chess clubs.、Um, because a lot of schools are always gearing kids towards STEM, which is fine, but I think that we should have science and arts, you know,、um, academic and,、um, you know, other hobbies. They, or like, not, not even necessarily like hobbies, but like, Academic and like artistic interests that you know they can explore for themselves, right? Because the world isn't all just like science, you know, art brings us a lot of joy. And I think that denying our children that is really unfair to them. So I wanted to provide this like free opportunity for them. Yeah, that's amazing. I think art is definitely a way to express yourself. It's so cool that you're. Able to like have that opportunity to inspire others and teach these kids. And so, speaking of inspiration,、um, I wanted to know if there are any role models for you when it comes to your art. Yeah, so probably all the art teachers I've had in my life.、Um, so, when I was younger, I had this. <clears throat> I had this art teacher. Her name is Elise c a s t e l l I haven't talked to her like since I was 10. She doesn't use like social media. Like she's, she's you know, she's very free spirit. She's like, social media is.、Um, 
but she would always like stay late because my mom would get off work late so she'd always stay with me and then I actually would help her teach the class after mine which was with the younger children so that was like my first taste of teaching um and then actually the one would have taught me how to use art as a healing practice for myself um, so I think about her every now and then. Um, I also had this professor in, in university, Li Huai. Uh, she's Chinese, but she's lived in America since like the 80s, probably. Um, but so she's really cool. She does uh, these huge Chinese calligraphy drawings. So they're ink drawings because it's, it's with ink. For some reason, we don't call them painted. Um, but I put paintings so that way people get the like idea. Um, but her art is always really thoughtful about the Chinese identity and subverting traditional Chinese calligraphy art um, in a more modern sense. And I try to um, emulate that to some extent. And then another art teacher that I had was a professor at UCSD, Mara DeLuca, and she does these huge, soft, like acrylic paintings. Like, um, like they're just soft, just like gradient paintings with these really cool like graphic elements. Like she will like extend her canvas or cut her canvas. Like she really kind of takes something really simple, but it's incredibly elegant. Um, so some of my pieces um, are a little bit, you know, I try to like emulate that sort of soft calmness that she that she brings. Um, and then, there's, you know, famous artists, Miss Martin, there's Julie Moretu, um, and a lot of contemporary female artists that I feel are always like overlooked um, by the public. It, I mean, that's a extensive list and I love it. Um, so speaking about uh, Chinese identity. Um, you've you've got a pretty unique identity, I would have to say, especially when it comes to the art world. Also, just the Asian community in general being queer. I'd love to hear about how your identity plays into your art. Yeah, so um, I use art as sort of a way to reconcile all of these identities. Um, so I have this piece that I called Pride, uh, basically um, a portrait. Um, and I, you know, sort of interweave the bisexual colors, the, the pink, the purple, and the blue. Um, and I think that a lot of queer art sometimes centers around how being queer is like evidenced by a queer relationship. Um, but I don't really think that that can always be the case because there are a lot of bisexual people who, you know, will sometimes be in a heteroship, sometimes will be in a homosexual relationship. That doesn't necessarily mean that one moment they're straight, one moment they're a lesbian or, or gay, as a lot of people will like try to force upon them. Uh, no, they're, they're sexual. <laughs> they're still bisexual or pansexual or queer, or however they identify. Um, but I wanted the piece to sort of communicate how being bisexual is an identity and not necessarily um, oh, proven by the relationship currently. It's, it's, it's something that is continuous uh, and not necessarily dependent um, on the relationship. So I, I wanted to kind of subvert the expectation that queer art has to show queer people or multiple queer to suggest um homosexuality um and that you can you can just be gay by yourself <laughs> if that makes sense no yeah for sure i mean i think that's really beautiful and that there's so much significance behind that piece of art um i also wanted to talk about some of your other pieces of art um so i have this this piece that i actually just finished the other night it's going to be in a show that i'm doing later in la uh, it's called peony uh, peonies are a really 
a salient Chinese symbol. Like in Chinese culture, um, they use a lot of peonies throughout, you know, the, the embroidery and like of the paintings. Um, they're sort of to do with like, I think like wealth and they usually like represent like young girls. Um, so I sort of painted it um, in the sort of more traditional style. And then like in the corner, I have these sort of um, sort of whimsical, like white, uh, almost almost drawing like uh, paintings. What I kind of was thinking with that is sort of how Chinese American people in particular, but also Americans in general, you know, we're sort of living between the past and the present. Um, you know, we take a lot of, you know, old culture with us, like all of our parents <laughs> tell us all of these like old sayings or, you know, we do these hundreds or thousands of year old traditions for holidays. Um, we're also, you know, incredibly modern people, right? We, we've, we've, most of us have like fully integrated into American culture more or less, even, you know, mother countries or the Asian countries, like they've also modernized while also holding on to the old culture and so i kind of wanted to capture that in a very harmonious way um so that's what I, that was the sort of idea behind that i love that <laughs> i am yeah. excited to see the finished piece <laughs> i love that <laughs> yeah i did not know what to do like originally i was like oh what if i did like a poem or something i, I didn't know what to do like there was like like lines i was just like that was like literally like from my palette i had like all this like excess paint and i was like what if i just <laughs> jack like, art oh, right there okay. <laughs> <laughs> that looks nice i love it well um so to hop off that whole painting world that we just talked about um i wanted to ask you why you like to ink paint ink paint <laughs> right right so um i did this really huge uh ink drawing in oh i want to say like winter 2019 i think it was like a final or something we were supposed to do a diptych which is like two pieces that are together this one is called that one's called uh east wind west wind and so in the black painting or um, with the house in, in the Chinese landscape, that one is why, like, I personally have never been to China. I just know that they'll know I'm American. Like, just like one look at me and like, they'll hear like my really poor Chinese accent. Cause I mean, I took Chinese in like high school and like college, but I, I still feel incredibly like off. So it's kind of like, wherever I go, I don't really quite, you know, like sometimes like when I grew up, um, where I live now, Kamanga, it's like increasingly more Asian. Well, when I was growing up, like there was like five Asian kids in my class. And I remember asking me like, hey, are you and this other girl related? And I'm like, well, first of all, she's Japanese and I'm Chinese. We don't mm -hmm. even have the same last name. That doesn't even make any sense. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, you kind of had to also sort of figure out that you're Asian, right? You took a step back and you're like, wow, all my friends are blonde hair on hair and blue eyes. Like literally all my friends at elementary school, I was thinking about it. And I thought about that one day in sixth grade. Um, and it wasn't until like high school and probably like college that I had more Asian friends. And this was mainly because I took Chinese class. Mm. And then on the other hand of it, you know, when I go to 99 Ranch and the cashier starts speaking to me in Chinese, sometimes I can understand, but they talk, they talk at a fluent speed, you know, it's way too fast for me to catch, you know, and then, and then I say in like really poor Chinese that I don't understand. And I just like feel like they're disappointment <laughs> or like, um, you know, I, I can't like order for myself when we go for dim sum or like I could, but like I would be really embarrassed. And so I just have my mom do it. So I'm, I'm working on it. Um, and then the other thing is that I'm actually supposed to speak Cantonese. So I learned from like this like podcast on Spotify and I'll like relay it to my mom and she sound like you're speaking Cantonese with a Taiwanese accent. And like, that's because my Chinese teachers were Taiwanese. <laughs> 
So, th this, this ink drawing is supposed to sort of, you know, relay that feeling of simultaneously being in two worlds while not feeling belonging in either. Mm. That's very poetic. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, I do want to end this on a good note. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so just for a little fun question, um, do you listen to music while you paint? I do, yeah. Um, a lot of it, I mean, for me personally, um, throughout college, I've always saw it feminine and female um, role models because when you become, <laughs> because my entire college was during a certain presidency, um, I feel like the only that ever centered me was turning to positive energy. Um, so I listened to uh, like a lot of like King Princess, um, a lot of Little, Little Sims, um, a lot of No Name, um, some like Rico Nasty, um, and then like a lot of like the, um, like the really popular, uh, like all that bedroom pots are really good to, to paint to. Uh, cause I spent a lot of times the, in the UCSD studios until like, like 11 or 12. And you know, you have like your headsets on and then like, there's like other finishing their paintings too and you're all just like screaming but yeah. every now and then like someone puts on some like really good music like one time we like literally like slapped each other to keep ourselves awake there's like a video on my on my instagram but yeah that that just kind of speaks to like the artist community though like everyone is everyone is like really like constantly panicking about their painting and wrestling with them if they even like it <laughs> um, <laughs> it's really fun. So I did this this painting. I really like doing really like doing portraits, but it's of me and my sister when we're kids. I think I'm supposed to be like one, and she's like four or three or something like that. Um, we're like sitting in my grandma's house, of those like Chinese dining chairs that like every Chinese person had with like the redwood. And when we're kids. I think I'm supposed to be like one and she's like four or three or something like that. Um, or like sitting in my grandma's house, those like Chinese dining chairs that like every Chinese person had with like the redwood and there's like, you know, like it's like really shiny and there's like carved wood and there's always like still the plastic on the cushion. Um, do, do you know what which, which chair I'm talking about? I definitely, yeah. Yeah, every person has it. I feel like every Chinese person has it. Um, but you know, she like I'm wearing this like very like Western like bib with like an elephant on it, and she's wearing like this like Snoopy shirt. But in the background, you see like I've kind of sort of imply um, you know some of the like Chinese pottery vases or like the the redwood. I think it's called teak, possibly. Um, mm -hmm. That's in the house. Um, but this was sort of <clears throat> to kind of pay an homage to like our Chinese American upbringing of like, you know, like we have Chinese faces, but like a lot of our upbringing was like quintessential American. Like we ate Lunchables or like we watch, you know, American TV. Um, we didn't necessarily, I don't think, like we had like some of those really like Chinese nursery rhyme CDs, but I don't remember any of them. <laughs> like I went to school and I only remember like we still have like the book of like all the characters we had to write but I only remember that <laughs> that's a, that's what I remember doing um but yeah a lot of um this this page also sort of somewhat of an olive branch to my sister because we never were incredibly close growing up so this was sort of me painting this like for our relationship, like for her. The um, really funny thing is that like I, I brought it, I like sent it to her or like it was supposed to be guys, but like my mom knew about it and I told her, she was like, yeah, mom told me. And I was like, thanks mom. <laughs> um, but my dad really likes it. It's, it's in his room right now. It's in his like man cave. Um, <laughs> 
I, I was thinking about really expanding it into a series because I think I sort of really nicely captured that flash photography in the painting, you know, where like, like, like an old camera or something or like one of those like old digital cameras. Um, so I was thinking of expanding that into a series because um, it was inspired by an art colleague I had uh, when I was taking, when I was an art minor. She did an entire series of her and her siblings uh, after old photos. And I thought about how we don't really see, but I've never really seen like Asian in an art museum, you know, um, let alone Asian people at all. Like usually any Asian art is like of nature or of animals or something. Uh, hardly ever places are, are in the museum. So that's why um, I continue to try to do like more self portraits and um, more paintings. I want to do more paintings eventually of, of, of Asian people uh, because I think it's really important to to see ourselves um, in all things. Yeah, yeah, no, that's really great. Um, that was so personal, like, it was very thoughtful. Well, I'm so glad that I was able to interview you. We could hash out all the details and I'm excited to see if you do continue it as a series, then the Peace Project has something to look forward to. <laughs> um, thank you so much, everybody, for watching. Have a good day. To continue supporting this incredibly talented and thoughtful artist, check out her website at katherineang.com slash my hyphen art for future updates and new paintings. Thanks for watching and peace out.